Hi, and welcome to another RetroNAS video. Today we'll take a look at Samba, the open source server that provides SMB and CIFS protocols. So to start with, I want to log into my Raspberry Pi, my RetroNAS device, uh, and choose the installer. So I'm going to run my command prompt. Log into my Raspberry Pi and run RetroNAS. Okay, I'm going to choose install things and I'm going to choose uh, Samba. Okay, so that's all installed. Uh, we can just review what happened there. Uh, anything in green is something that wasn't changed. Anything that in that yellowy orange color uh, is something that was changed. Uh, and anything that comes up as red is an error. We didn't have any errors, so that's good. Uh, absolutely critical first thing to do is to set our SMB or CIFS username and password. Now by default, uh, it doesn't uh, match up with the system username and password. So that's normally when you install things like FTP or um, Apple Talk AFP or those sorts of services. They'll always run as the default Pi user uh, and they'll use that password. But SMB needs its own password. So we're going to configure that here by choosing this option, configure retro as password. Uh, now it's going to tell us that the current user is Pi, so if you've got a, a default RetroNAS install on a Raspberry Pi, that's going to be your primary user. If you've done a custom install or uh, you're running this with a virtual machine or something like that, you might have a different user, but Pi is our default user. So it's going to ask us for the system password, which isn't the uh, SMB password, but I'm going to set that anyway here. and then it's going to ask me for the SMB CIFS password. There's a few messages there about some legacy protocols within Samba, you can ignore those. So just set exactly the same password you did for the system password. That's pretty important. Uh, that system password is going to be what you log on with SSH to, so make sure that's right. I have set mine just to username pi password pi. Very, very insecure, but for the purposes of all these demonstrations, I just want to make that nice and simple. Okay, so that's done. All right, what does this look like from Windows? Let's check that out. Okay, so I've just clicked on my network browser here and let Windows refresh. And you can see straight away that Retro SMB has popped up in my network browser. So that's my RetroNAS advertising itself via a couple of different methods. Uh, it can advertise itself via uh, the, the actual um, NetBIOS component of Samba, uh, and it can also advertise itself via a tool called ZeroConf, uh, better known as Bonjour for Mac users, uh, or Avahi for Linux users. So we can just double click on that. and will ask us for our username and password. So we're going to put in our username pi password pi. Again, that's what I've configured. You can configure anything you like. And there's one uh, share in there currently, which is the RetroNAS share that RetroNAS has configured. And then from here, I can just create files in this share.
So if this uh, network browsing mode fails, uh, there's a couple other ways to get to the share. If I hold the Windows key and press R for run, uh, I can put in the UNC uh, address, which might be the name as it's advertised here, Retro SMB, so that's one option, and that might bring it up. If that fails, I can put in the IP address in a similar way. Uh, now, because the name is different, it's detecting this is a different name, it'll re-ask for the password. So I can just put that in. And there's that same share. So that's a very modern OS way to do things, but we're not here to uh, use RetroNAS with modern computers, although you might be. You might want to put files uh, on RetroNAS from a very new computer so that a very old computer can access it. Uh, or if you've got, like, your... Uh, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Mister, some other system connected to this that you want to have files available on, uh, you can push them to your RetroNAS via this method from a very new computer and you can access them from a very old computer. Uh, so we'll go ahead now and look at RetroNAS from some slightly older systems and see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm on a Windows 10 machine now. Uh, this one's a little odd. Uh, never seems to want to pick up half the machines in my home network. Picks up one or two desktops, but it doesn't pick up the other uh, half dozen or so machines that the other systems pick up, which is a bit strange. Um, so I can use the UNC here to get to my retro uh, my retro NAS device. see my Windows 11 file that I dropped there. I've dropped the new Windows 10 file in there just for interest sake. Uh, likewise I can use the IP address again. And see that same path. However I've got a Windows 95 machine here. Uh, sitting inside a VM. I don't have a physical one uh, just at the moment, but running inside a VM uh, will certainly show uh, how SMB works for much older Windows systems. So we'll launch that now. Now I've configured the system to use the client for Microsoft networking and I'll show you where that's configured in a minute. But when it starts, it'll ask me for the username and password uh, and I've told it to use username pi password pi, which is the same as what I set up on my RetroNAS. Okay, so let's take a look at some of that network configuration. So you can see here I've got some protocols installed. I've got the client for Microsoft Networks. Now there is uh, IPX installed, but that's going to be ignored. Uh, likewise, NetBuoy is installed, but that's going to be ignored too. The important ones are TCP IP for the particular uh, network card that I've got in this system. Now this is a virtual network card of course. Uh, this is bridged to my home, uh, to my Wi-Fi adapter inside my laptop uh, so that's on the same network. It appears like it's on my home network. It's not a uh, natted or virtual uh, connection. Sorry, it is, a, it is a virtual connection, but it's not natted in a separate network. It's on my same network. So if you had a, a physical Windows 95 machine with a real network card, uh, not a problem as long as that's plugged into the same network as your uh, RetroNAS device. 
uh, that's just been configured with uh, DHCP. So my uh, home DHCP server will give that an IP address. Uh, it's had the uh, file and print sharing for Microsoft Networks turned on. The primary network logon here is the client for Microsoft Networks, not the netware or the Windows logon. Uh, and I've got file and print sharing enabled. If you change any of these, Windows will want to reboot, of course. These old versions of Windows wanted to reboot uh, if you sneezed. So just be aware of that. Make sure you've got all this set up the way you want. Reboot into it and then it should all work okay. All right, so let's have a test. Let's browse our network neighborhood and see what we can pick up. And there you can see Retro SMB, which is really nice. So that's our um, Retro NAS device advertising itself as Retro SMB uh, via NetBIOS. Uh, and because we put in our username and password, uh, that should all work nicely. So here's our Windows 11 file that we dropped, which is great. Here's our Windows 10 file. Let's write our own. So similarly to other systems, if uh, for whatever reason the automatic browser doesn't find it, we can put the UNC in directly. Windows R for run. And put in the name. And again, we can just browse that as before and see our other files. So with that in mind, uh, let's check out a totally different operating system now. We'll jump onto an older build of Mac OS X and we'll see how that goes with SMB. Right, so I'm sitting on this uh, iMac G5. If I just click about this Mac, we can see it's a, a, a PowerPC model G5 iMac uh, circa, I don't know, 2007-ish or something like that. Um, the last of the PowerPC Macs, this one only goes up to uh, Mac OS 10.5.8. It, it won't do uh, Mac OS X 10.6 and above. Uh, but it's a pretty good little machine for testing uh, legacy network protocols and things. Um, I'll try at some point to have uh, OS X 10.3 potentially loaded up on my uh, older iMac, uh, my little CRT iMac, but uh, this one I'm going to use for testing uh, SMB and later on AFP as well, which is pretty cool. Um, it's connected to my home network via Wi-Fi. Uh, the Wi-Fi is very slow. It's only uh, 802.11b, I'm pretty sure. Maybe G, I think it's B. Um, so it's super, super slow and super laggy and uh, pretty bad for broadcast kind of stuff, but a good way to test. Um, wired Ethernet works really, really well. Um, I'm pretty sure this thing has a gigabit port in it, uh, but definitely uh, wireless. If it works on wireless, it works on anything pretty much. Okay, so uh, let's see what it looks like. If I click Go uh, Network, it'll browse my home network. Now you can see a whole bunch of different machines have popped up. It's picked up some Windows machines and whatnot, but it has definitely picked up my uh, Retro SMB there, which is nice. If I hold the Apple key and press I for info, um, it doesn't tell me a whole lot here, just that it's a Mac server. It's kind of boring. Um, the icon is just a boring generic icon. Uh, later on I'll do a video on AFP and I can set that icon via some special flags which we do in RetroNAS, uh, which is pretty cool. But anyway, let's try and connect to it with the old double click. Uh, now, it'll say connection failed because uh, I'm not supplying a username and password. If I hit the connect as, it'll allow me to change that username and password. So let's do that. Pi Pi again, super insecure. And there we go, there's the RetroNAS uh, share. And in there are our text files. 
Uh, so we can see this one was written in Windows 11. Uh, this one in Windows 10 and this one in Win95. So let's make a new one and put it in there ourselves. choose to put that in I'll have to dump it on our desktop probably and then copy it across uh, can I make this plain text no art here will do there we go dump that in there And there's our RTF file on the desktop. Great. So that can be shared with all the other uh, operating systems that we had. Um, this one's all the way back to 10.5. Older uh, Mac OSs will be able to use this, of course. Now, that was via the automatic browse method. Let's have a look at a slightly different method. We'll actually uh, eject that volume uh, and try a different way of connecting. Okay, so if we click uh, go connect to server, we can actually put some details in here. Um, we can use the SMB notation. Now the uh, retro SMB should work. And again, it'll ask us for username and password. So that works. We can use the CIFS notation. Now uh, within these menus too, if we Apple I inside there, it will tell us a little bit more. So uh, now with this particular Mac OS 10.5, I just used the CIFS notation instead of the SMB notation, but you will notice that uh, the server is an SMB no matter what. In later macOS models, I believe it was introduced as of, I'd need to Google this to verify, but I think it's about 10.8 or 10.9. CIFS and SMB actually used separate protocols. Uh, CIFS forced uh, an SMB version one protocol and SMB allowed it to be an SMB two or higher protocol for those newer Macs. And uh, I think that's the same right up until about uh, probably a newer 11 Big Sur or one of those. And I think that they've dropped SMB one altogether for uh, security reasons. However, there's a couple of different options there for you depending on your version of Mac OS. Uh, and of course, if you want to save this, you can put the, uh, the share in there directly too, if you like. Uh, that's not a bad way to do it. Uh, you can also put the IP address in here if that doesn't work for any reason. It should work because uh, Macs use uh, Bonjour, uh, also known as ZeroConf or Avahi, to find these systems, which seems to be uh, pretty solid out of uh, RetroNAS. Uh, but you can click the plus button here. That'll add it as a a favorite, you can then just double click on the favorites. Uh, you put in your username and password, and of course you can uh, remember that in your keychain if you want, that will save it to the system uh, and make connecting and disconnecting a whole lot easier. So that's pretty much SMB on a Mac working very nicely.